situation. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, once P Pass popped up, we were in Port Macquarie. Uh, the other P Pass. Kettling around, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, oh, that swell came up, and we just sort of, me and Shana just went for it, and we were just like, this is make or break. Um, and it was psychotic. We booked the flights, drove straight from port to the airport overnight in Brizzy and flew there. And if anyone's been there, they know the trek that it is. Um, even though we're rocking up late, it might have been windy. What kind of a trek is it? How many flights? How many boats? How many uh, tuk-tuks? Um, it can go from like, it can be two and it can be four. So yeah. it usually takes about two days, a stopover, a multi-island sort of hop. But it is one of the most draining legs you can do. But it's and it's expensive, so it's like you go. It's you, it's a roll of the dice for sure. But um, I've had a good track record, and I know, and I, I know people that know that wave really well. So I'm always in there. Yeah, mm. Bugs, <laughs> pretty quick. Scardi, Alois from P Pass. Um, yeah, I've got trusting people to to help me out with choices. But so that trip saved the whole movie. Uh, once it's me and Shano went there. We come home and like, yeah, we're on. Like, we could we could save this thing. And so, like, just break it down, though. Like, you literally got there with, like, the swell had already hit and you had, what was it, like, an afternoon to get clips and the next morning or something like that. Like, you'd travelled for fucking four days or two days or whatever it was. Mm. And, uh, yeah, talk, talk to us about that. Uh, p- the pass depends on the swell, but uh, you're usually in for three days at least in a swell, mm. the ones I've gone on anyway. So uh, we rocked up the morning of the what was meant to be the biggest and I remember getting like off the plane and my friend Mitch who has a camp there from Hawaii he uh he's like it's the best day we've seen in ages mate and I was like just yelling at the baggage handlers to hurry up we got out the front I there was a bunch of Japanese guys with us staying at the camp and I was picked up their board bags and threw them in the van before it even (laughs) stopped and they were freaking out on me I was like we gotta we gotta fucking go right now and we got out there at like lightning. Speed. Did he bow? Did he bow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because so, I thought that was the day and that's the, as soon as we could get there, you know, we knew we were going to miss that morning. But um, that day turned out amazing. And then the next day turned out amazing. And then the next little bump ended up being bigger. Um, so it was just like three days of like good size pee pass and, and really, really uncrowded. Like I surfed a good chunk of that by myself for three wow. days because of the backdoor shootout being on. No one came from looks Hawaii. It so scary, man. No, no one that came doesn't from look Oz. that fun to me. It looks too, it looks too hectic. I was just, I don't know. How, what about you, Smithy? I, I don't know if I could sack up by myself in surf like that. Yeah, the yeah, line of water, the shoulder on it must look fucking harrowing as you're paddling into it. I know on the smaller days it's, it's Fucking cylindrical and perfect, but yeah. my good mate uh, Dane Bernheim, Squiddy, Jeremy Flores is filming. He nearly died out there, mm. and he fucking rips like uh, just too deep in the pit. Hit his scone on the bottom, and uh, they found him fucking face down. Uh, he's lucky to be alive. Hell. But yeah, um, yeah. What, what's it like being out there on your Pat Malone and uh, staring at just fucking stacked lines of absolute Pacific <laughs> Roy? Fuck, it's a dream come true. <laughs> 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 it's like I was saying earlier you. with Indo and stuff. I was like, I'm. I'm rubbish in crowds and I, I've been getting more more of a disdain for it. So that was like, I don't know. It was like every every trip uh, that was fucked coming back mm. and giving in, in. But just sitting out there by yourself is really hard because it is semi-open ocean. It is a pass, but it's also very deep water out the back. Not much of a landmark to go off. You just have one buoy that's kind of like off your side out. So I just, I, I, I swear, I, I looked at that buoy. I was going to go and draw a face on it after it because it was like my, <laughs> that Wilson. was who I oh. hung with that. <laughs> <laughs> well done! Well done! Uh, you finally? Yeah. Wilson the buoy calling yeah. you into him. Yeah, this that, one! <laughs> that, r- that round little redhead over there just helped me yeah. have, have, uh, have my line up. Uh, for Fuck days me. but it was just yeah that was that was a trip of my life i think for sure and that wave is is scary at times but it's it's perfect <laughs> like you, you once you're out there and the, you you feel the speed it generates for you mm. you know you can make shit and and it's like an indo perfect wave on many waves but it's also 
like an indo wave into a slab which is what I, I love like that's the best can you just did you must have copped a couple of bone rattlers out there yeah for did, sure can you take us through sort of a, a wipeout where you were caught off guard because uh just the other day smithy or surfing lennox and a guy kind of crumbled a section i went to go around it and uh just got caught in that weird little right on that little bump zone where the, yeah. the lip kind of hits the rail of your board and it just fucking detonated me so badly like out of nowhere and uh, I was underwater laughing just going fuck that hasn't happened for ages and then I, I didn't feel any pull on my leggy I was like oh no fuck and yep yeah, sure enough I come up and there's me board just getting ragged out along the rocks yeah the one that Connor O'Leary just gave me by the way so uh, <laughs> that was our board board our board our board <laughs> but uh, actually you should have a go on it now that none of the fins are in it <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, can you take us through through one out there? Because like you know, it's, I'm sure it's, you're cracking up at the bottom of a, a ten foot, ten foot <laughs> by yourself, down. knowing that you know there's you, you got to be rolling around down there for a bit. Yeah, you just get kind of rolled there. Um, it, if you don't, the 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 gnarly bit is if you fall on that end bowl. That's where it drains. It goes really, really below sea level, and that's where you're gonna hit if you go down. But I like I got away with heaps of shit on that trip. Um, you just kind of get rolled, do a lap of the lagoon, and come back out. I mean, I when I'm not on trips, I'm like at home doing the cleaning and school run and shit, and I need to get worked out. Pee past. <laughs> I really need it. <laughs> I want some adrenaline so Just bad. Just to feel something. <laughs> I need, I need, yeah. Yeah. Better than cutting yourself. Uh, uh. Yeah. That like perfectly triangular Vegemite sandwich ain't cutting it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you realise... no crust, Dad. <laughs> yeah, Louis no crust. Kids get oh. to school, open their lunchbox and there's just pentagrams everywhere. There. <laughs> <laughs> Vegemite pentagrams. <laughs> And you realise you literally are the Colonel Kurtz of surfing, disdain for crowds, uh, you know, just travelling as far and distant to some strange pass so you can surf on your own 10-foot cones. Yeah, it's a worthy mission. Mm. Um. Um, yeah, I, I, sorry, <laughs> mate. I just I didn't mean to drop in there, but I, I just wanted to ask. We mentioned uh, Shane Fletcher before, who we should give props to because uh, yeah, incredible job. He, he's, a, he's a master. Yeah, at what he does, but um, when uh, Ozzy and Cowboy were filming 156 tricks for a year and spending you know a lot of time in each other's pockets, uh, for a couple of funny things went down. You know, uh, I think Ozzy had one of the best sessions of his life on this French Shorey. Uh, it was sort of you know perfect surf for him, doing big airs when not many people had really been stomping them and linking them together, and he had a, a crowd just sort of gathering and. Pretty soon they were just cheering, cheering you know, like baguettes up in the air, Ooh-la-la, people baguettes, waving baguettes. scarves. Just going absolutely crazy for him. And he turns around and goes, where's Cowboy? And Cowboy had actually uh, met some chick and gone down to Spain for the day. He'd split, <laughs> he'd split and search up into the old in out, in out. And I was <laughs> walking around going, hang on, that was like the best surf I've ever had. I was getting cheered on every wave and uh, no filmer. And uh, and I uh, know another, on another trip they did, um, I think they ended up coming to blows at an airport, just grabbing each other around the neck and just fully punching on. But so, they do it to you, Vaughn. They do it to you, the yeah, airports. They do, they do. Yeah, they do. But I, I'm just, you know, the, the relationship between the filmer and the surfer, when it's a partnership, when you're both mm. fully invested in a project and you both want it to be, you know, as good as the other, is is there, did you find any moments where the, the feathers started to ruffle? Yeah, for sure. And it was just through being tired and just, we both like try so hard with whatever we're doing. He is like an absolute perfectionist to the point where it's, crazy mm. uh when it comes to editing and filming so like yeah there was, there was heaps of shit but like it was just being tired and trying too hard and did you bash him that's what i want to know hey fletch is a big rig yeah, he, he was like he yeah, played, yeah. Uh, second row for the burly bears did he filed you up and put, it, put, put you in his backpack and just no. go i've had enough no had you enough. know what it was a real real good collaboration Great. i want to say that because it was Everything I lacked, he kind of had, like asking people about financial stuff or just organising shit that I'm like not the best at and then other th- other times I would help him at stuff he needed to. But so I think like the our minds... Shaving his back and stuff like that. Yeah, nah, yeah. like <laughs> that. Um, Bleaching his corn. Yeah, I didn't shave it. I just used nair. It just wipes. Undoing his balloon <laughs> knot. <laughs> yeah, but no... Nah, um, 
No, I think we complemented each other really good. I think uh, the editing and the deadline was crazy um, and we we just butted heads on a few things, but it's just that's just the creative. Like it's a masterpiece, mate. It is. But he was like so... Um, Always so respectful that it was my mm. vision. On you, Shana. And it was my art direction. And he would bring points to me that were very valid and I would take them. But there would be also points like stuff that he would just mm. say, okay, this is this is what you want. This is what you want. So and I'm like that was felt so good for me. I'm assuming it came from Shane, you know, like, oh, wait, uh, I don't want to bring this up, mate. But uh, it's eight months in the filming. We've got three clips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I... I've, Fuck, I was like the biggest case study. You could have followed me around and maybe documented some self-combustion. There was like <laughs> three moments where I thought I was going to disintegrate into particles um, <laughs> during the making. But uh, yeah, I, I, he didn't need to tell me shit. I knew what was wrong <laughs> at all times. Now, uh, I've got to nut this out too. Tell me about the uh, Ponape, the, the P-Pass McValue meal. I understand at the convenience stores there, they are... Uh, it, it, the McValley meal, the Pompey McValley meal, it's uh, it's a joint, a, a coconut water and a, a lobster burger or something like that. They're selling joints at the uh, convenience stores over there. I haven't tapped into the meal, but... <laughs> 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 um, because if you've ever had a joint and a coconut, you don't really need anything else. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the joint situation is really good over there. That's another <laughs> one of the reasons I love that place. You can get joints delivered to you wherever you are what um pre-rolled is a dollar a fat one's two and i think you can get a stick for 20 bucks okay Um, it's competitive yeah it's really nice so you Mm. just kind of have uh, and there's also a drive-through there's a house that you uh, thought so yeah that's the maybe what you're thinking yeah yeah there's this house uh, that your taxi guy goes down and down a driveway a little uh carport and an actual window that's that opens and yeah, you buy yeah. pre-roll. That's great. And you go. There are entrepreneurs <laughs> born. They're in P-Pass. Did you actually have a look at the, the factory? I know like you go to you know parts of Germany, you can go on the brewery tours. And mm. uh, Did you go to the, the P-Pass joint rolling factory? <laughs> no. <laughs> like the Macus freezer? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, no. No, there was, I was kind of sketched because like, I don't know. I don't really want to get caught doing the wrong thing there. Um, so definitely wasn't hanging too hard. There's some sketchy places there, mate. You're in the middle of middle of the Micronesia. That place is really special. It has a very piratey feel. Mm. Mm. It is dank and it is uh, beautiful and I don't know. It's just everything. It is a, a very like a, a Caribbean vibe, mm. but a bit darker, deeper yeah, it's water. You such know? A, and it's kind of a, a recent discovery as far as the mainstream surfing consciousness goes. I guess it come on the map with like, the first footage I saw was Dan Ross getting fucking giant oh, ten yeah. foot cones back in the day, and then Dorian in the campaign like maxed out P Pass, and I just remember my fucking eyes falling out of my skull when I mm. first saw uh, Rossi just stand. I was like, "What is this? It looks like fucking I don't know a mix of reverse chopes and like backdoor all rolled uh, into one." I remember yeah. that trip. That was with uh, Grambo, right? Yeah, really big and blue, like big, crazy looking. Chip shot yeah. rolled like a bit yeah. of shippies in it too. It was a Wow, it was a monster though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Alois just put that up on the Pompey Surf Club uh, Instagram. A couple of those clips is Dorian, Matthews, Rossi. I'm not sure who else is there. But um it's such an iconic wave. It is my favorite wave in the world mm. for sure. It's the, I don't I haven't surfed a right that good anywhere. Mm. Um it's crazy. But it's fickle too. It's like it's hard to get start of the year is usually the time and there might be one uh if you're lucky to of those memorable ones a year, you know, mm. and sometimes it doesn't happen for a year. So, although it is the caliber of wave it is, it's like, it's hard to get to the Hawaiian yeah. boys are onto it. Like, do, do you yeah. see those guys up there a fair bit? Yeah. And it's like, actually, a, it's, it's a special place in that way too. Cause I've been there on three s- other trips with a bunch of my friends from Hawaii also. And it, it's never, I've never been there and it's been a hassly environment. Mm. I've every time I've ever been there, it's been sit in line and, and it's your turn, it's your turn. I've never had any, uh, I've never seen any bad stuff go down the line up there. And that's um, that's rare. I don't know if it's like that on a crowded next swell. It's a long way to go to get skunked too. Could you imagine, Vaughn? I mean, we've all been skunked, but just mm. multiply it by 
ten thousand US dollars. Oh, trying to think wow. of the furthest I've ever travelled to get skunked. It's probably uh, not too fast, maybe. Maybe just from the front door to North Wall. Yeah. <laughs> don't do a whole lot of travelling to get skunked, mate. But you can't help it sometimes. So I, I don't know. I, yeah, I can't think. I, I think seven slaves. We didn't get like the greatest surf, but uh, a couple of days at Lance's left and stuff like that made it worthwhile. Seven days, seven slaves. Yeah. That, yeah. that was like, you know, that we were hoping to get... need good waves. That was like the best movie ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, Iconic it was, it was, like kettle-ish waves for Aussie. It was the two-foot two foot surf that kind of like broke it open yeah. for... Uh, for Aussie and, and TB was lighting it up too, so yeah. I don't know. I think uh, if you're a lesser surfer, you can you can get somewhere, and if it's waist high and not too many people, you can have fun. Yeah, but yeah, Pompeii. I don't know. Don't know if it's if I'm ready for it. Six foot, perfect. Love it. Yeah, yeah. You'd love it anyway. You're going so fast, you can get through it. <laughs> <laughs>